A Nazi soldier opens the hatch to his panzer tank. He scans the horizon for enemy Soviet forces. Suddenly, a single soldier pops out from behind a kitchen tent. He holds a rifle in one hand and an axe in the other. The Soviet has a crazed look in his eyes as he runs toward the Nazi tank, screaming at the top of his lungs. He swings his axe back and forth, ready to decapitate anyone who gets in his way. Shocked, the Nazi soldier slams the hatch shut and peers through the viewport. The Soviet soldier leaps into the air and lands on the tank. The man who would later take down this and other Nazi tanks using his axe and deception was Ivan Pavlovich Sereda. The craziest part was that he was only a cook. That's right, this Soviet war hero who would go on to destroy tanks and successfully fight off countless Nazi soldiers during World War II started out as a cook in the Red Army. Ivan was drafted into the 91st Tank Regiment in 1939, just after Nazi Germany launched their invasion into Poland and started World War II. At the time, Germany and the Soviet Union had a non-aggression pact, but Stalin and the rest of the Soviet leaders did not trust Adolf Hitler to keep his word. This would turn out to be a smart decision. The Soviet Union started amassing tanks and troops along their western border just in case Hitler decided to break his pact. Ivan Pavlovich Sereda wanted to serve his country and asked his superior officers to transfer him to the front lines. They looked at him and thought for a moment, and then his CO shook his head. He told Ivan that anyone could shoot a gun, but not everyone could cook as well as him. His talents were needed in the kitchen to keep the troops fed, which was just as important as being stationed at the border. Ivan disagreed but followed his orders. Then in February 1941, Nazi Germany started amassing troops along the Romanian-Soviet border near where Ivan and his tank platoon were stationed. The Soviets had been keeping close tabs on the war in Europe. Hitler and his Axis powers seemed to be decimating the continent. However, Great Britain was still a thorn in the side, and the Soviets didn't think Hitler would be bold enough to launch an offensive on a second front. But he was a psychopath, so anything was possible. Ivan's regiment was repositioned and stationed in the small forest near Dvinsk, which is now Dolgovpils in current-day Latvia. For several months, there was no action. It just seemed like both sides were at a standoff, and Hitler might actually keep his non-aggression pact. But then on June 22, 1941, Ivan and his regiment heard a crackling voice come over the radios. The Soviet communications network was not very reliable, and it was difficult to make out exactly what was being said. But between the static, the words everyone was dreading were heard. The Nazis had launched an invasion into the Soviet Union. The attack was called Operation Barbarossa and consisted of over 3 million soldiers and approximately 3,000 tanks, 7,000 pieces of artillery, and 2,500 aircraft. Ivan was only a cook, but he couldn't help but feel a sense of duty. He wanted nothing more than to be promoted so he could fight on the front lines, but it was not to be for the moment. The Nazis began bombing cities along the border as they pushed through the Red Army. Their forces decimated Soviet resistance and advanced further and further into the motherland. Ivan in the 91st Tank Regiment had seen little action, but in August 1941 that was about to change. Word had reached them that the Germans were moving closer to their position. The tank battalion was sent out on a scouting mission to see if they could intercept the incoming Nazis. Ivan was left all alone at the camp to prepare dinner for later that evening. Ivan was cutting up potatoes and other vegetables to put into a hot stew that would keep his comrades warm and their bellies full. It was a quiet afternoon. The wind blew gently across the field where Ivan whistled to himself as he cooked. As he took a break from stirring and stepped out of the tent that served as the kitchen, he heard the sounds of engines in the distance. He thought that his regiment must be returning from patrolling the area, so he continued to cook. The sound of the tank started getting closer and closer. The pots and pans in the kitchen began to clang against one another as the ground shook from the approaching tanks. They didn't seem to be slowing, which made Ivan nervous. The area where the supplies were kept and the tanks were parked was a decent way away from the kitchen but these tanks seemed to be rolling right up to the tent. Ivan poked his head out to see what was happening. From where he was, he couldn't see over the embankment on the other side of the road. He stepped out from inside the tent and walked toward the road. He slowly climbed up the small hill and peered over the side. What he saw was startling. Two German tanks from the 8th German Tank Division were heading toward him. He ducked back down behind the ridge and paused for a moment. He could hear the tanks continuing straight toward him. Ivan had wanted so badly to be on the front lines and now he was. The only problem was he was all alone and he was up against a heavily armored Panzer 38T. In an ideal situation, he would be with a platoon of men or at least in his own tank, but that was not what fate had in store for him. As he peered back down over the embankment, he saw one of the tanks peel away and head in a different direction. However, the other Panzer was still moving straight toward him. Ivan slid down the hill and ran behind his cooking tent. Just as he disappeared from sight, the Nazi tank crested the hill and approached the road. The roar of the engines began to slow as the tank came to a stop. The hatch of the German Panzer 38T creaked open, and a Nazi soldier stuck his head out. He scanned the area for any Soviets. 
as this appeared to be their encampment but he didn't see anyone. Ivan was panting behind the tent. He closed his eyes and slowed his breathing. The air was cold. His breath rose like steam coming off a hot pot. Ivan looked to his left and saw his rifle leaning against a crate. He grabbed the rifle and a grenade resting on top of the box. Ivan knew that the Germans would roll over him if he didn't do something quickly. Or even worse, they could lie in wait for his comrades to return and launch a surprise attack. Ivan decided that he would need to take out the tank himself. He moved around to the side of the tent. His foot bumped into something resting on the ground. He looked down to see an axe impaled on a log that he was chopping. Ivan looked at the axe for a moment and then smiled. He had an idea. Ivan picked up the axe, peered out from behind the tent, and prepared to do something crazy. When the Nazi looked the other way, Ivan ran toward the tank, screaming like a madman. He fired his rifle with one hand while swinging the axe wildly with the other. This surprised the Nazi who quickly retreated back into the tank and shut the hatch. He screamed to the tank crew that they were under attack. The machine gunner swiveled the 7.92mm ZB-53 machine gun toward the crazed Soviet running at the tank. He pulled the trigger. Bullets started whizzing by Ivan's head. They ripped through the tent behind him, but Ivan managed to dodge back and forth to stay out of the direct line of fire. Miraculously, he made it to the side of the tank without being hit by a single bullet. Ivan launched himself off the ground and scrambled up onto the panzer's hull. He moved toward the front of the vehicle and brought his axe down on the machine gun. He hit the barrel of the gun over and over again until it bent and jammed. Ivan had disabled the tank's close-range weapon, and now he needed to deal with the crew inside the metal behemoth. The Nazis began to yell. The tank's engines roared to life. It started to move with Ivan on top of it. He looked around for some way to stop the Nazis from getting away. He used his axe to cut off a piece of tarp that was holding down supplies on the hull of the tank. Ivan grabbed the tarp and stuck it over the viewport so the crew inside couldn't see where they were going. The tank began to swivel back and forth. Now Ivan had to think of a way to get the Nazis to come out of the tank. He began shouting at the top of his lungs for his comrades to start setting grenades under the tank in order to blow it up. This was a bluff as there were no other Soviet soldiers around, but the Germans didn't know that. Ivan continued to shout orders and bang on the hull of the tank with his axe. This confused the Nazis inside, who now thought there was a whole platoon of angry Soviet soldiers outside the vehicle. Ivan continued to shout at the Germans to give up or their tank would be blown up with him inside it. He even used different voices to make it seem as if there were more people than just him banging on the tank. The Nazis tried desperately to escape, but since they couldn't see, they had no idea there was only one man outside their tank holding them hostage. After several minutes of this charade, the Nazis shouted from within the bowels of the tank that they wanted to surrender. Ivan smiled to himself as he agreed to their surrender and told them to come out one at a time. The first Nazi crew member turned the locking mechanism on the tank's hatch and exited the armored vehicle. He was greeted by Ivan holding up his rifle and instructing the German soldier to line up along the tank. The rest of the tank crew followed. Ivan had captured four Nazis and a Panzerkampfwagen 38T tank single-handedly. When the Germans realized they'd been duped, they were likely extremely ashamed, and at that point they didn't even know that Ivan was only a cook. That evening, the rest of the tank regiment returned to camp. They found a Nazi tank with its crew tied up waiting for them. The Soviet soldiers got out of their vehicles and looked in astonishment as their cook, Ivan Pavlovich Sereta, exited the kitchen with hot food in his hands. His superior officers asked him what happened and Ivan gladly recounted the events of the day to them. The Soviets examined the vehicle, interrogated the Nazis, and found that Ivan was telling the truth. He really had captured the Nazi tank using nothing but his rifle and an axe. That night, as all the Soviets ate the meal that Ivan had prepared, they listened to his daring story of how he'd managed to trick the Germans and take them all prisoner. They were all astonished at his tale. His commanding officers immediately took him off the kitchen duty and promoted him to scout. He'd finally gotten what he wanted. Ivan was sent on missions to scout Nazi positions in the area and bring information back. The story of how he used his axe to destroy a machine gun on a German tank and then capture the crew spread like wildfire across the Soviet Union. It was used in propaganda posters to bolster the morale of troops. Ivan was now a war hero, but he didn't let it go to his head. Only a few weeks after taking out the Nazi panzer with his axe and becoming a scout, Ivan captured another tank and demolished a unit of Nazi soldiers. This time he was better equipped, but what he did was no less miraculous than his first battle with the tank. Ivan and a group of scouts were conducting reconnaissance on an area that was reported to have German soldiers patrolling it. As they made their way through the forest, the birds were singing and the sun warmed the air. They reached the tree line and sighted a group of Soviet soldiers running down a dirt road. Ivan was going to make his presence known when suddenly a Nazi tank broke through the trees. The tank fired its cannon at the retreating Soviets, causing the trunks of the trees to explode into shards of splintered wood. The debris went flying everywhere as the machine gun aboard the German tank opened fire. 
The bullet slammed into the ground all around the retreating Soviet force. As the tank laid down covering fire, a group of Nazi foot soldiers appeared from behind the armored vehicle. They started to pursue the Soviets down the road while the tank followed. The Nazis shouted at the Soviets to halt, however if they were caught they'd be tortured for information, so rather than surrender, the Soviets dove behind fallen logs and returned fire. But the support of the tank was too much, and the members of the Red Army appeared to be doomed. Ivan fell back to the tree line and stealthily worked his way behind the tank. The Soviets fired at the tank, but the armor was too thick, and the bullets bounced off harmlessly. The Nazis continued to advance forward. While the tank and Nazi soldiers were focused on the trapped Soviets, Ivan climbed up the back of the vehicle. He carefully stepped over the gear strapped to the tank's hull and made sure his footsteps made as little noise as possible. Since the machine gunner was firing at his comrades, they couldn't hear Ivan scurry across the top of the tank and unlock the commander's hatch. Ivan armed a grenade, opened the hatch, and peered down into the opening for a moment. He locked eyes with the Nazi commander sitting in the middle of the tank. The German yelled to warn the others, but it was too late. Ivan dropped the grenade into the tank, slammed the hatch shut, and jumped off the moving vehicle. The grenade detonated, killing everyone inside. He'd done it again. Ivan had single-handedly captured another tank. Without missing a beat, Ivan jumped back on the tank and ran to the hatch. Even though he'd killed the tank crew, the Nazi soldiers were still advancing on his comrades. Ivan threw the hatch open and climbed into the smoldering inside of the tank. The bodies of the crew were covered in shrapnel and blood. Ivan moved the gunner's body out of the seat and took position. He turned the turret and aimed directly at the advancing German force. Taking a deep breath, Ivan peered through the sighting tube and made sure everything was lined up. He squeezed the trigger. The tank buckled as the shell was ejected from the barrel. It flew through the air and slammed into the middle of the Nazi unit. The detonation threw bodies everywhere. Around a dozen of the German soldiers were instantly killed or seriously injured. The rest laid down their guns and immediately surrendered. They were now sandwiched between their own tank, which was controlled by the former cook turned war hero and a squad of angry Soviet soldiers. Confused as to what was going on, the Soviet troops cautiously approached the Nazi tank. Its barrel was still smoking. They asked whoever was inside to come out slowly. Ivan popped the hatch and poked his head through the hole with a smile on his face. The entire unit let out a cheer. When Ivan returned to base after his impromptu rescue mission, he was greeted with even more accolades. On August 31, 1941, he received the Presidium of the USSR for exemplary performance of combat tasks of the command on the front of the fight against the German invaders and showing courage and heroism. He also received the title of Hero of the USSR, the Order of Lenin, and the Gold Star Medal. He would soon be transferred to another unit, but one of his former comrades said that the 91st Tank Regiment kept his axe as a battle relic and a reminder of Ivan Pavlovich Sereda's heroism. There was no time for Ivan to celebrate his awards, however, as the worst fighting of the war was yet to come. Ivan was made platoon leader of the 4th Infantry Regiment and gained command of the 46th Infantry Division of the 1st Shock Army. He saw some combat during this time, but it was when he was promoted to company commander of the 7th Infantry Regiment that things got really intense. This unit was sent to Leningrad during the siege of the city, which would become one of the bloodiest and most brutal blockades the world had ever seen. In fact, many historians believe that the siege of Leningrad was actually a form of genocide because of the Nazis' systemic starvation and murder of civilians who were stuck in the city. Things got so bad during the siege that there are accounts of Soviet civilians cutting off their own flesh and eating it for sustenance. The siege began on September 8, 1941, when the Nazis secured the last road into or out of the city and didn't end until January 27, 1944, 872 days from when the blockade started. It was at this point that the Red Army was able to overcome Nazi forces and push them back toward Germany. Ivan joined the fight to hold Leningrad at the beginning of the siege as it was pummeled by Nazi artillery. He would not stay for the duration of the battle, as his skills were required in Moscow only a few months after the Siege of Leningrad had begun. While in Leningrad, Ivan was likely deployed for reconnaissance and saboteur missions. With his ability to take out tanks in unconventional ways, he might have been ordered to disrupt enemy artillery encampments and try to break the siege. During these missions, Ivan and his unit would use forests surrounding the city of Leningrad to hide from German forces. Using the cover of night, they could place bombs near ammunition stores and do their best to hinder enemy operations. We don't know the exact role that Ivan played in the defense of Leningrad, but it may have been just as crazy as his other two major run-ins with the Nazis. After a few months of fighting at Leningrad, Ivan was made the company commander of the 185th Infantry Division of the 30th Army and sent to the Battle of Moscow. On November 27, 1941, Ivan and his unit met up with other Soviet forces near the city. The brutally cold temperatures of the Soviet winter were quickly approaching. Although the Red Army didn't have the supplies and equipment they needed, all of the soldiers, including Ivan, had survived decades of winters in their country. It would not be enjoyable, but the Soviets knew how to handle the brutal weather. 
The Nazis, on the other hand, were worn down from months of battling Soviet forces to get to Moscow. Ivan and his men were set up along the outskirts of the city to stop the advancing German forces. They would send tank regiments to try to break through the Soviet defenses, but units like Ivan's had laid down mines and set up kill zones where they would ambush any Nazi forces that came through. With each day that went by, the weather got colder and colder. The Germans were beginning to freeze to death. Although Ivan was now in charge of his own company, he may have also helped out in the kitchens where his career in the military had begun. He carried his axe with him, as it was a valuable tool not just for defeating Nazi tanks but also for chopping wood to keep his soldiers warm. By December, Ivan and the rest of the Soviet forces had held off wave after wave of Nazi advancement toward Moscow. The Germans could not break the line. Their army was starving and freezing to death when on December 5, 1941, the Soviets launched a counteroffensive that would push the enemy away from Moscow and back to Germany. By January, the Nazis could no longer fight back. Temperatures were recorded as low as negative 42 degrees Celsius or negative 44 Fahrenheit. The German Luftwaffe couldn't fly their planes as their wings and propellers were frozen in place. Ivan and the Soviet forces at Moscow pushed forward and destroyed any German force that was unable to escape the harsh landscape and climate of the Soviet Union. But the weather and continuous fighting also took their toll on the Red Army, and a stalemate developed. Ivan continued to fight the Nazi invaders for the duration of the war. His expertise and heroism allowed him to move up in the ranks of the Red Army. Ivan was a lieutenant when the war came to an end in 1945. He retired but still had a desire to serve the people of the Soviet Union. He became chairman of his village council to help rebuild after the devastation of World War II. Unfortunately, the toll of war does not end when the fighting stops. Due to breathing in harmful fumes from tanks, spending countless nights in below freezing weather, and harmful chemicals that were ingested while fighting the Nazis, Ivan's health began to decline rapidly in 1950. He passed away at the age of 31. From the time he could join the military to the day he died, Ivan Pavlovich Sereda served his country and gave his life to the Soviet Union. He died a highly decorated war hero and remains the only known chef to take out a tank using an axe. Now watch Lady Death, world's deadliest female sniper, or check out the one-man World War II tank killer.